Section 1. The Cosmic Plan. Part A. E.T. Souls and the UFO Presence. Chapter 1. Doors and Definitions. As in the classic TV show, Let's Make a Deal, we face three choices when considering our approach to UFOs and E.T. life. First, there's door number one, through which we find nothing more than facts and figures on sightings, material evidence, cover-ups, and conspiracies. Inside this box, we find endless debates between those with secret information and those who deny it, UFO researchers of various stripes and professional debunkers, the so-called scientists who guide public opinion of cosmic truth, the late Carl Sagan having been foremost among them. These two groups, strange bedfellows indeed, have been locked in mortal combat for the past 50 years. Each side claims to hold the truth, but neither is convinced by the other. One says yes, the other cries no. To be honest, die-hard skeptics will never cry defeat, while UFO researchers, no matter how professional, such as Dr. John Mack of Harvard University, who specialized in abduction research, they cannot produce indisputable proof of alien life, cover-ups, or secret deals either. I guess it is to be expected, but what really seems sad to me is that this whole battle actually does quite little to improve humanity. Like nomads fighting over sand dunes in the desert, arguments between skeptics and believers are fruitless, and in any case, the human spirit can never be nourished by physical ET proof or evidence of cover-ups. Material evidence is mute for speaking to soul. Although door number two is a bit more exciting, it's also a dead-end street. Choose this one and you'll find spooky greys, bizarre experiments, and genetic tinkering by shadowy intruders. While I do acknowledge the reality of abduction, contact, negative beings, I have no doubt that these are but one small piece of a much larger puzzle. To try to grasp the mind of ETs by living in this box is like trying to judge national character by visiting jails. We will suffer from a severe sampling bias. Furthermore, in my opinion, most people who have had traumatic experience, including the experts on the front line trying to help them, are unaware of the deeper issues involved. Unfortunately, they usually have scant metaphysical understanding of the powers of self, the laws of interdimensional contact, the ways of spiritual healing, and the means of accessing divine power. Instead, this community is fed by a steady diet of horror tales, left in the dark helpless and confused, expecting the worst, with no recourse to God. Yet, all this represents just one chapter in a much larger book, and there are answers and solutions. Nevertheless, the ET abduction research community does not seem to have answers nor solutions. If we get stuck to this ET criminal element, we will miss the greater light that stands behind them. But there is still door number three through which you will find an integrated spiritual perspective, a vision of the metaphysics of cosmic plan in which E.T. walk-ins, wanderers, and world servers operate. With a different view of UFO reality and a focus on soul evolution, the emphasis here is wholly spiritual, love, wisdom, and purpose. Here we talk about cosmic unity, transformation of consciousness, the two paths, and trust in higher self. While skeptics and researchers are locked in endless debate, while anti-conspiracy activists rail against the system, which, by the way, is going to collapse soon anyway, and while abduction researchers either lament or happy-spin their tales of negative ED contact, we can go a whole lot deeper by considering the spiritual view. Beyond this third door, we can find inspiration, purpose, and meaning, as well as real people who've been awakened by rare experiences. They're not arguing, they don't predict doom, and they're not trying to convince you of anything, nor am I. They affirm that the cosmos is filled with intelligent life, and they say that love is the key. But more importantly, their message reveals a more balanced picture of universal life, a picture in which UFOs and ETs make perfect sense. Basic Definitions In describing ET souls, I often use the terms walk-ins and wanderers. This second group is also called star people, starborn, or star children. Although their higher dimensional origins and life purpose may be the same, what distinguishes them is how they took birth in human form. Walk-in. This term describes a process of interdimensional, interplanetary soul exchange, 
as well as the individuals who experience it. In this process, a soul from an older ET or angelic civilization or a more evolved Earth soul enters the voluntarily surrendered body and personality stream of a human being to better serve humanity and Earth. Interestingly, some walk-ins do not consider themselves ET souls and have little interest in such matters. In my view, however, most so-called walk-ins are actually wanderers, as I believe that genuine walk-ins are far more rare than people imagine. See Chapter 3, Extraterrestrials Living on Earth, for one story. Wanderer. This poetic term, used by George Hunt Williamson and other UFO contactees in the 1950s, describes a process of interdimensional, interplanetary soul transfer, in which a higher dimensional ET soul incarnates in the normal way, i.e. as a baby, and agrees to forget their own memory of ET identity and purpose to aid the evolution of humanity and the planet. This process of cosmic soul wandering has occurred since the beginning of human experience on Earth and is common throughout the universe, and expresses the basic law of service in which elder souls roam freely the many worlds in need.